everyone. In this video, I'm going to go through a demo of how command line arguments work in C and C++. So I've got a little program here called command line args main.cpp and it's a simple program that's got a main with a few comments in it and then a print array function that I don't call. So this print array function, you can see here on line 16, it accepts a pointer to a char and an integer. Okay, so this pointer to a char is actually uh, an array of chars, okay, because we know that arrays store the memory address of the first element of the array. That's what makes them a pointer. And on line eight, I have a, a simple working definition of what a, what a pointer is. And so this next parameter here, then this is the size. This is how many chars are there in the array that ARR points to, okay? And then all it does is just print out each character separated by a space. Okay, so that's all that function does. It's a little utility function that we're gonna use with our command line arguments. All right, so I don't know if you're coming from a C background or a C++ background, but if you're coming from a C background, you should be good to go uh, knowing a little bit about what a string is. But if you're coming from a C++ background, then you know what a string is, but you actually know what a C++ string is. Okay, you don't know what a C string is and they are different. All right, so we know that a string is a sequence of characters. So in C++, we use the string type, okay, right? So I'm gonna have string name gets Gina, something like this, okay? So a string is a type, it's actually a class in C++, okay? And it was created for many reasons, one of which I'm sure is to make working with strings from C much easier, okay? So this is a C++ string, okay? So C++ string. Okay, now let's think a little bit about what a C string is, okay? And if you're coming from a C background, then this is just a string to you, but I'm gonna call it a C string to differentiate it from the C++ string, which we'll just call string. All right, so a C string is actually an array of chars that is null terminated, okay? So this means the last character in the array is this special character called the null terminating character, and it looks like this, okay? So we've seen you know, things like slash n, slash t, right? These escape sequences that represent a character, okay? So the slash zero together is the null terminating character. And what makes working with C strings so tricky is not that they're actually stored as an array of chars, it's that this null terminating character means you actually have to allocate a char array to be one greater in size than the string it's going to store. Okay, so for example, if I want to store, say, uh, hello in a C string, okay, how many chars do I need? How big does my char array need to be? So you're like, okay, one, two, three, four, five. There's five characters, so I need a char array of size five. No, you actually need a char array of size six, okay? So you need a uh, number of chars plus one for the null terminating character uh, to be your size of your char array. So that's just a brief crash course in what a C string is. Okay, so you're like, okay, well this is a video on command line arguments. Why is she telling me about C strings? Well, because command line arguments use C strings. Okay, so what are command line arguments? All right, oftentimes we use programs at the command line, right? So say for example, uh, I use the program called cat. Okay, so cat is the name of a program, right? It's an executable and I can run it at the command line. But I rarely just run cat by itself, right? Because it's like expecting some input. I run cat and then I space and then I type the name of a file that I want to cat. I want to see the preview of or the contents of. So let me save this. Uh, so let me do cat command line args.cpp and then I see the contents of command line args.cpp. So what I'm actually doing here is I am passing in a command line argument to the cat program, right? Just like a function can accept an argument, which is its input, programs can accept arguments as input, 
right? So we have to tell cat what file to open. We tell it via a command line argument. So we can have our programs then accept command line arguments. In fact, it's not too hard to write a little cat clone, right? I could write my own little cat utility that accepts the name of a file, opens that file, prints out each line of that file to console via C out or printf, and then closes the file, right? Okay, so that's what we're gonna learn, command line arguments. And in order to do command line arguments in C and C++, we have to know about C strings, okay? So that's where we're at right now. All right, so we've been writing int main, open print, close print, curly bracket, return zero, curly bracket, for a long time, right? We've just kind of memorized it. We're like, okay, um, the return type is an int because it returns zero, okay? This function doesn't accept any arguments, right? So there's no parameters, but actually main is overloaded so that we can accept arguments. So I can actually type in uh, two parameters right here in main that are used to store those incoming arguments from command line when this program is executed, okay? So here's what they are. The first one is an integer called uh, typically argc, but you can name this whatever you'd like. And argc is um, the count, the count of the arguments. How many arguments are there? And the number of arguments is always one greater than what is passed in, okay? So if I wanna pass in multiple arguments, let's do, um, I did a copy command recently, let's pull that up. Where's that? Here it is, copy, right? So the copy command, here I've passed in two arguments, right? So here's the first one. Space is used to delimit or separate arguments, and then here's the second one. This is the source file, and this is the destination file for my copy. Okay, so argc, I'll just make a note, argc stores the count of how many arguments there are, and I'm gonna say plus one for the name of the program. Okay, so even if you don't pass anything, into your program when you run it as command line arguments, the name of that program, the name of that executable is always still gonna be passed in whether you want it or not, okay? All right, so in this case for the CP command, then argc would be three, one for the name of the executable CP, one for the name of the source file, and one for the name of the destination file. All right, so that's the count, right? This is like the size of my array of guess what C strings, okay? So let's just type this next one out. Uh, char star, so a pointer to a char, argv brackets. Okay, so this looks kind of tricky. All right, so argv is an array of C strings. Okay, so each argument is stored in argv as a C string. Okay, so you're like, Huh, okay, so a C string is a char pointer, and yes it is, because if we go back to our definition, right, I said that a C string is an array of chars, and what do we know about arrays? Arrays are pointers, right? They store memory addresses. So here, I have argv, it's an array, where each element in the array is a C string. It's a pointer to a char, it's an array. All right, awesome. So. That's kind of my brief overview of these arguments here, or these parameters here, which represent command line arguments. Let's go ahead and start playing with them. All right. All right, so let's just do something simple first. Let's just print out the value of argc and see what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna have to head over and compile this. Okay, so I'm just gonna run a dot out. I'm not gonna put any command line arguments in the first time and we'll see what the size is. All right, so the size is one, okay? So remember, that's that one that I said is always there. It's the name of the executable. So we know that we can safely then index into argv at zero, okay? So let's take a look at that. Argv sub zero is gonna be that first command line argument that we always get. Right, and there it is, a dot out, right? So this is the command that we use to run this program. So this is our executable right here. Wonderful, okay. So now let's write this more generally, right? So we can always just kind of write a loop that iterates argc number of times and prints out, right, our um, 
each element in argv. All right, so let's do int i for i gets zero, i less than argc, i plus plus. Okay, I'm going to c out. Maybe I'll just copy and paste this. I'm going to see out i, so we can see which number we're at, and then we're going to print out argv sub i. All right, so i is 0, printing out argv sub 0 gives us dot slash a dot out. Now let's play with this and start passing in some command line arguments. So maybe I will pass in uh, maybe something like uh, source.txt, destination.txt. Maybe I'm going to write my own little copy clone, right? So we saw with the copy command, we pass in two file names, right? One for the source file to copy and one for the name of the destination file to copy source into. All right, so now I run this and look here. So argc is three. Okay, the first argument is still a dot out. Okay, but now arg sub one is source.txt and arg sub two is destination.txt. So we can pass as many as we want uh, into our program as command line arguments, which is really cool. It makes our program more parameterized, right? All right, so last thing I wanna show you here is uh, just using print array to work with our C string, okay? Because we kind of got this working definition of a C string. Okay, it's an array of chars that's null terminated. So let's take a look at that array of chars character by character. So I'm gonna call print array and I'm going to pass in say argv sub i. But here's the difficult part, right? I actually don't know how many characters there are in the C string in argv at index i right? So I actually don't know what the size is. I don't know what the size is. So that's why C strings have that null terminating character, right? Because we don't know how many chars there are, but we could walk through each char in the char array and keep track of the count of number of chars we've seen until we hit the null terminating character. And then we know that's the end of the string. Okay. Isn't that kind of cool? That's how we know the size of, of a char array that is actually a string, a C string, right? Because that null terminating character. So thankfully we don't need to write that function, you know, something like uh, C string length. Uh, there's actually a function uh, called sterlin, okay? Sterlin, where we can pass in argv sub i, and it will do that for us and return how many characters there are in that C string, in that char array, right? Number of characters in the char array until that null terminator is met, okay? So that means the size of the C string is different than the number of characters in the char array, right? The size of the C string is the number of characters like five for hello, but the actual size of the char array is five plus one, which is six, okay? So that's kind of tricky. So uh, Sterlin here, okay, try and compile it. Okay, it's complaining about Sterlin and it's saying um, it's defined in the header file C string. Did you forget to include C string? And we did. So in order to use Sterlin, we actually have to explicitly include the C string library to get access to it. So I'm just gonna come up to the top and do pound include C string. Try and compile this again. Bam, it compiles, okay? And now what's really cool is our print array is now walking through each char in our C string char array and printing it out, okay? Note that it's not printing out the null terminating character because we know the size, the number of actual characters in the C string, not including that null terminating character. All right, so that's kind of an overview of command line arguments. It's a way to parameterize our program, right? So we can pass in values when we go to run it. We've been using command line arguments for other programs all the time, right? Like here's even another example, G++, right? G++, our compiler, or GCC, our compiler, 
accepts command line arguments, which is the names of the files or the paths to the files to compile, right? So now if we wanted to, we could write our own G++ clone. That'd be a little bit harder to do than say our cat clone or our copy clone, but you get the idea, right? If we need to parameterize the execution of a program, then we can pass in those parameters via command line arguments when we run the program, all right? Thank you for watching.